Datin Sri Rosmah Mansur said that High Court Judge Muhammad Zaini Mazlan had wrongly decided to call her to enter her defence when the prosecution had purportedly failed to prove that she solicited money from Jepa Holdings for the 1.25 billion ringgit solar hybrid project in Sarawak. This was among the 127 grounds stated in her petition of appeal that was filed by her solicitor in the Court of Appeal. The main focus of the grounds was that Rosma had not solicited the bribe, as this was done by her former aide Datuk Riza Manso and offered by former Jabat Holdings Managing Director Saidi Abang Samsudin and his former business partner Ryan Ratswil Abdullah. With this, Rosma's lawyers claimed that the High Court had erred in deciding to call her to enter her defence when it was not her who had solicited the money. The court document said Rizal was the actual mastermind and benefited from the solicitation, even admitting that he received part of the bribe money. Rosmah was found guilty on all three counts of graft in the trial. She was sentenced to 10 years jail and fined 970 million ringgit. Bermodela National has failed in its attempt to block Burma's auto's proposed general mandate to issue new shares at an October 6th annual general meeting. PNB, which holds a 4.11% stake in Burma's, said it voted against the proposal because the auto assembly firm did not reveal details of its rationale for the exercise and the usage of the funds raised. However, its vote failed to sway the outcome of the proposed resolution as it was duly passed after 663 shareholders who collectively hold 627.8 million shares, representing 70 1.7% of voting shares voted for it. The Employees Provident Fund is Burma's largest shareholder, with a 17.24% stake, followed by Dynamic Milestone with 14.53% equity and Amanah Raya Trustees, which holds 7.21%. In its notice of the AGM, Burma's had said the resolution was to allow the company to issue new shares to provide flexibility for any possible fundraising activities, including but not limited to further placing of shares to fund future investment projects and for working capital and acquisitions. Burmaz's share price closed 0.53% higher at 1 ringgit 89 sen, giving it a market capitalization of 2.21 billion ringgit. American journalists Tom Wright and Bradley Hope said fugitive financier Low Tick Joe or Joe Lo seemingly controls 333 million US dollars or 1.56 billion ringgit via a British Virgin Islands firm that has offices in the iconic Shanghai World Financial Centre. In the sixth episode of their Search for Jolo YouTube series, Wright and Hope said a researcher they appointed was looking at the corporate structures that Penang Bon Jolo owns in China. One of these structures is called Jin Weijing Business Consulting, with offices on the 28th floor of the Shanghai World Financial Center. Jolo and his business associate, Seat Lilin, are said to have set it up and then had their names removed as the company changed its name to Guiyue Business Consulting. The duo said the researcher discovered that the ultimate ownership of that company had also changed recently from Jinwell, Jolo's family holding company, to another entity, a British Virgin Islands company called Grace Zenith. Citing documentation discovered in China, they said the paid-up capital of the subscribed capital contribution of Guiyue's new owner was 333 million US dollars. This, they said, suggests that this is one of the major places where Jolo has money that originates from 1MDB. The Naga National expects to recover 5.8 billion ringgit between July and December this year under its Electricity Generation Cost Recovery Scheme based on the imbalance cost passed through ICPT mechanism. According to the latest corporate presentation, the company in July and August received a collective 1.9 billion ringgit out of the anticipated 5.8 billion ringgit to be recovered. The energy giant said the ICPT mechanism allows it to remain 
neutral to fuel price vulgarities as it is able to pass through any variations in generation cost in the form of rebates or surcharges. In upholding this mechanism, TNB said it will explore all options for cost recovery in its proposals to the government, which will make the final decision of the form of recovery. The ICPT is a six-month pass-through mechanism of variations in uncontrollable fuel cost and other power generation-specific costs incurred by TNB for the preceding six-month period. A surcharge is incurred whenever generation costs are higher than the forecast power generation cost for the assessed period, while a rebate occurs when there are savings in generation costs as compared to the forecast power generation cost for the review period. The Securities Commission Malaysia SC says it made an appropriate decision to suspend the licence of Inter-Pacific Asset Management's IPEM Executive Director and Fund Manager Dato' Nazri Khan Adam Khan to carry out capital market activities. The regulator's chairman, Dato' Sri Dr. Awang Adik Hussein, said today that the SC had studied and evaluated the relevant evidence before taking action. He added that the Commission is not able to comment further on the matter, given Given that it is ongoing, with Nazri Khan having the opportunity to appeal, Nazri Khan's licence was suspended for six months, effective October 6. In a statement yesterday, IPEM's management said it is appealing against the suspension, saying the action was due to administrative breaches and not its fund management. Under the Capital Markets and Services Act 2007, anyone who wishes to carry out capital market activities except a registered person must be appropriately licensed.